in. And now we're finally, finally, finally about to plot and create our first um, polymer phase diagram or mixing uh, phase diagram. So uh, we kind of ended up last video saying we're going to kind of find these kind of critical points, these binodal and spinodal points, and we could actually find an equation that's going to give us our binodal and spinodal points as a function of any phi2 that we can have. Because as you see in this phase diagram here, the location of these binodal points is going to vary depending on what our our phase, our area, our volume fraction is. So some of them might not occur, some might occur. We'll get an equation and solve for where they will occur as a function of phi1 and phi2. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's, we just need to find, again, the second derivative, uh, set it equal to zero. That is going to give us our spinodal points. If we're symmetric, we could use this for binodal. Otherwise, we can't do it. Uh, or we will not do it. You I mean you could, but uh, it'd be very computationally intensive. And then next time in the next video, we're going to find out these critical compositions associated with a critical chi parameter. So again, what is this critical temperature, PC or critical chi, where everything is going to mix above or below that point? So let's go ahead and figure that out. So luckily in Mathematica, already written out. So this is our Flory Huggins free energy term right here. We've looked at this previously and plotted it. Um, now, if I want to find the binodal points, I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to phi2, the first derivative, and set it equal to zero, and then it's going to spit out my expression. Uh, and I'm going to just leave x1 and x2 as kind of variables, uh, and I'm going to solve, uh, actually I'm going to solve it as a function of chi. So that's what this expression is. So take the first derivative as a function of phi2 and solve for chi. Why am I solving for chi? Because I want to generate phase diagrams like the ones here. So I want to figure out um, I want to plot my spinodal and binodal because that's what this is right here. My spinodal and binodal. I want chi as a function of phi2 because that's going to generate my phase diagram. So what chi parameter corresponds to uh, again that binodal or spinodal point? You could do temperature as well. It's just that in, you know that inverse relation. So let's solve this as a function of chi and the same thing for our spinodals. So once we do that. I have a couple different uh, scenarios here we can look at. So first, let's just see. Uh, we can plot some very, very, very different uh, situations. So let's look at this one first. I like this. Um, let's hide this output for just a second. That's a little more complex one. So here, I'm plotting just the binodal and the spinodal for uh, uh, degree of polymerization, x1, x2, of 1 and 1. So again, this is just fully symmetric curve. This is our Bragg-Williams uh, full free energy. And you can kind of confirm that, and we kind of start to see some critical chi parameters uh, popping up here. So let's go ahead. Uh, and so that's kind of pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, so we can look at that for our B1, uh, B1, S1, so the binodal and the spinodal for my basically solvent-solvent free molecule mixing. I can also look at the binodal in the spinodal for B3, which is just mixing huge high molecular weight polymers here, as you can see right here. Look at the difference here in the two curves. What is different? Ooh, why did it, zooming out didn't help? Um, let me change my image size, excuse me. So let's go ahead and change image size to, let's just do 100. It's gonna look a little weird. Oh, it's gonna look very weird. So instead, let's look at 1,000. Uh, not 100,000. So I'm going to shrink this just a little bit, though. And I'm going to undo this one. So what's the difference between mixing polymers and mixing uh, my solid? They're shaped exactly the same because, again, they're symmetric. X1 and X2 are equal to one another. So our curves aren't going to be shifted like uh, you know due to that kind of entropy contribution. The only difference is this critical chi parameter, right? Our chi at where we get mixing, so remember, low chi, so a chi less than, it looks like two here, will, we're mixing everywhere. But look at the chi here. Really, 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 really tiny. Again, because huge molecules, huge polymers do not want to mix. Look what happens when I change, let's just change it to, let's just change it to 1,000. Change here. Changing there. Print plotting here. Look at it. Orders of magnitude changes in when I can mix in terms of chi parameter. So that is the kind of the power of symmetrically mixing polymers versus symmetrically mixing uh, basically solvent or free molecules. So 
now let's look what happens uh, at S1. So this is my, again, special, when I just mixed a very, very short polymer with a solvent. Look what happens here. My B2 shifts dramatically. So I get, you know, here we're symmetric. So the critical value where everything mixes is for a solvent solvent is this kind of this value here. We're going to figure out in just a second. And it occurs at this value of B. So where, again, at 0 0.5. But once I start to mix polymer and solvent, you see this kind of critical parameter dips and, you know, becomes lower. But also the location in terms of phi 2 where it occurs is different. So we get this kind of shift where, again, phi 2 is increasing my number, uh, my volume fraction of polymers. So as I increase my volume fraction of polymers, I can mix my whole solution, my solvent and my polymer solution will mix at higher values of chi. Uh, so that's a kind of an interesting, very interesting finding. Again, there's more translational entropy in terms of both, again, the polymers and the solvent. But you get the shift down into the left when you're mixing a solvent and higher molecular weight polymers. So you can see the same thing for the spinodal. Again, we can't do the binodal because we're not symmetric anymore. For S2, S2A, so S2A is right here. So I'm increasing the, uh, the size of my polymer. And you can see the curve continues to shift left and then down. So our critical kind of chi parameter here where we all mix, it shrinks, and then the, phi to the associated uh, phi 2 value, it goes down to the left. Uh, not, uh, you know, not like JFK and back to the right. But anyways, uh, hopefully people can get that reference. Um, so let's also look at one more scenario here, S3 and S4. So S3 is my spinodal for this situation here. Again, 1,000, 1,000. And my S4 is for again, an asymmetric polymer-polymer mixture. So you can see the difference again here. Actually, you can't even see the other one. Let me go back to my 100,000, 100,000. 100, three S4, so we can see everything. So you can see here, my S3, uh, this is my S3, so my symmetric polymer. It occurs over here. And now, when I mix with a smaller polymer, you can see the curve shifts up a little bit because, again, I'm mixing, you know, as you increase the molecular weight of the polymer, it becomes harder and harder and harder to mix. Why? Because there's less translational entropy states because more of my lattice is being uh, taken up by my big polymer. So you can see here when I mix with a lower molecular weight polymer, it shifts up. But again, I get this shift to the left um, where, again, you know, we get the shift in where that phi because, again, there's this difference in that entropy. That entropy, that 1 over x and 1 over x2 term, that introduces essentially an asymmetry in your free energy curves. Uh, and that translates to your uh, values here. So this is a kind of a nice problem to, uh, to kind of think about. If you're given these curves and you can kind of see these values, what can we possibly be mixing? And you'll work on that uh, in your uh, problem set as well. So before we end it, and hopefully that wasn't too fast, but again, you can kind of play around and see and think about, okay, what's the kind of implication here? Like, why am I able to mix at higher, value, or at higher values of chi? Well, it must be, again, because I'm mixing, you know, these are still way too small to be uh, solvent. So I must be mixing polymers. What's going, uh, there's some asymmetry here. Okay, they must be X1, X2 must not be equal. And these polymers must be much, much, much smaller. There must be one polymer that's smaller than another. So uh, that's what you want to kind of think about it here. So we mentioned, again, this critical kind of parameter chi, uh, or equivalently your critical temperature T. So this temperature, or this chi, chi C, where below which, Everything mixes at all compositions. Uh, and associated with that is going to be a phi C as well. So how do we calculate this phi C? How can we figure out what is that value? Well, again, on your free energy curve, it's just a maximum or a minimum. So if I want to figure out my critical chi parameter, all I'm going to do is look at my spinodal, or you could also look at the binodal. I'm going to take that uh, second derivative effectively. So let's look at the spinodal curve. So let's look at spinodal for, let's look at one and one first. So this is my spinodal. So I need to take, again, the derivative of this. So let's go back to our notes real quick. So to find my critical chi parameters and the associated uh, phi C, I can solve for my critical chi like this. Because again, the function that I'm, uh, my phase diagram is this. So if I want to find, where this occurs, what value here, all I have to do is take the second derivative, or first derivative of this equation, which is our spinodal, uh, set it equal to zero, and solve. So 
Let's do that for a derivative as function of phi2. I'm going to solve, set this equal to 0, solve for phi2. So this occurs, so my x sub c uh, will occur, my, uh, or my, excuse, excuse me, not x sub c, my critical chi parameter, let me zoom in here, my critical chi parameter, my x sub c is going to occur at a phi2 of 0 0.5 for a solvent-solvent mixture. Does that make sense? We'll look back in a second just to kind of confirm. But uh, that makes sense to me because, again, we saw that curve was symmetric. Now let's figure out what's the high parameter associated with this. So I need to do, look at spinodal of 1 and 1. I'm going to replace slash dot P2 goes to 0 0.5. And it's a critical high parameter of 2. This makes perfect sense to me. So let's look back at our S1. Spinodal and spinodal for our... Bragg Williams, monomer, monomer. Well, look at here. The minimum occurs at about 0 0.5, and the value is effectively 2. That's it. This makes sense to me. I, I'm, in, I'm in agreement with that here. Uh, and you can now generate and you know do the same thing for different uh, scenarios. So let's look at, you could do it again for 1 and 5, you know, uh, or you can make it more generic. So if I have any... I'm going to clear X2, X2 is right there. So let's say I have, I'm mixing a polymer solvent uh, situation. Sorry. So I'm mixing a polymer and in some solvent. I could find, and I could get here, my solution for this value in terms of X2. Uh, and I can try to, let me do full simplify. Simplify. So, yes, I like this value here. <laughs> so, what is this telling us? So, if x2 is 1, what is our critical chi parameter? 0 0.5 again, which makes sense. What happens when our n is very, 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 with our, with our, if our degree of polymerization is very, 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 very large? Well, this is going to shift to a phi2 value of what? So, 1 divided by something very, very, very large, it's going to shift to the left, exactly like what we see. So that is what is causing this asymmetry. And again, we could solve, you know, once you have this, you can plug in for spin of 1x2 slash dot p2 goes to uh, this value right here. Or plus, this plus or minus again comes from the definition of whether you're looking at phi1 or phi2. So I'm going to full simplify this. Full simplify. There we go. And I could get this expression right here. Uh, again, looks a little bit nasty, but when you, you, know, you plug in values, and actually, I've been very, very nice, and instead, I've created this nice little, uh, we'll talk about upper critical and lower critical solution temperatures in a bit, but I've created this kind of really nice document here that gives you, or allows you to calculate your critical chi parameter and your critical phi C, uh, depending on the different scenarios. So we've shown this and proved this here. We also saw the same thing for our polymer uh, solvent polymer scenario as well. And you get the same, uh, you can kind of prove this yourself, just mathematically. Uh, you can do the same thing for symmetric symmetric polymer polymer mixtures, for your most generic scenarios where x1 and x2 are not equal to 1 or not large. You could use this general expression right here. Uh, so it's a nice, this is a great summary to kind of show you and predict, uh, to predict where your critical chi parameter will occur and where that associated phase phi c will occur. So the nice part is again, this shows clearly that shift uh, to that critical chi parameter. If this is you know very 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 large, it's going to shift either to the oh excuse me, uh, let's look at it in terms of phi two beer. I said it's going to shift to the left here, um, and it will. Let's go back. So if this x2 is large, that's going to be 1 divided by a really, really large number. It's going to shift to small phi2s. And again, it, the plus or minus depends on how you define phi1 or phi2. In our expression, we always do phi2 with the, your polymer. So if we have a very, very large polymer, you'll see that this expression generally will hold. Um, well, not generally will hold. It will hold. And it'll be a function of this 2 over n. And then the most general scenario as well. So that is how... You can basically build, so we know how to build our phase diagrams, either by plotting our spinodal or binodal, depending on if we can in different scenarios. 
So we can plot that, create our free energy, um, our phase diagram, and if we want to kind of find our critical chi parameters or critical uh, temperatures and our critical volume fractions where those uh, occur, uh, we can kind of solve it just with this. So remember, below this, if chi is above this, we have phase separation. If it's below, we have complete mixing for all different compositions. So it's a really, really nice uh, kind of uh, scenario to have. So uh, next time, we're going to actually go back. And actually, we're, we're going to talk about this in Lecture 5. So don't worry about dilute. Um, so this is going to come back later. Don't worry. I mean, I'm not going to cut anything from my notes. but uh, <laughs> And we've already actually talked about um, the Hillenbrand expression as well. So next time, we are going to talk about this uh, upper critical solution temperature and lower critical solution temperature uh, and see when those occur and get to some really funky uh, phase diagrams. So look forward to that next time. Much more qualitative discussion. Now you're ready to attack that problem set and generate any phase diagram that I can ask on an exam or otherwise. So uh, enjoy that, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.